Are you tired of spam emails? In this video, we're gonna be breaking down some red flags of spam emails, so that way you're better protected in the long run. Let's keep your computer safe with what to do and what not to do. Plus, if you stay till the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Google to not only search your computer, but also clean up your computer as well. Hey there, John Snedeker here with Notary Signing Agent Blueprint. If you are looking to make more money as a notary signing agent or loan signing agent, go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now and hit the bell icon so you stay up to date with our latest high quality videos. Before we look at a, a one spam email, I want you to comment below how many red flags do you think I'll find with this one email, okay? Comment below how many red flags you think I'll find and let's go ahead and take a look. All right, it is time to break down this spam email and really show you exactly what you're supposed to be looking for. So we're gonna break this down on the spam email and we're also gonna discuss what new versus experienced notary signing agents will do and how they would typically handle this, okay? So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. The first flag that you have is that this lands in the spam folder, okay? So typically if it goes to spam, usually it is spam. Not always the case, not 100% of the time, but I would guess maybe 98% of the time you're looking at spam, okay? Now, the second flag that really jumps out at me is, are the X's and the loan numbers. You're not always gonna have uh, people sharing loan numbers with you. Maybe it's not uh, an all or nothing situation, but it's also really not like just half of the X's there. That definitely jumps out at me. The third thing that I see is actually the date for three slash zero four. If it's March 4th, would you do three slash oh four or would you do three slash four? Okay, so this little extra zero in here is something that jumps out as uh, to me. Uh, most likely it'd be three slash four, maybe three slash four slash the year that it is, but throwing that extra zero in there, typically you don't see that, okay? Now the fourth thing is that when you hover over the name, it's different from the email. So you can see Everclear Mortgage is a domain name, but look all the way to the right where you see at Caliber Home Loans. So Everclear Mortgage is, is the name, but then over here in the preview section, it's a completely different domain, okay? So that's really the fourth indication that something's up with this email. Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and open it, but typically you wouldn't open it, right? You already would most likely know at this point it, it seems funky, um, but even if you, you didn't sniff out any of those items, we're gonna still open it and really break this down for you. Now the fifth flag here is that, do you know this person? Did you expect this email? Do you have a closing today, right? If you don't know them, if you didn't expect it, if you don't have a closing, you've never worked with this company, uh, usually these scams are all time and date sensitive and they want people to sort of rush, okay? So the key is to not rush. The key is to just analyze things and not start clicking around when you really should not be doing that, okay? So I'm gonna continue to um, open, I apologize for the ring here. <laughs> the phone's always ringing, okay? And the sixth flag, I'm sorry, is another spam notification, okay? This spam notification, why is this message in spam? It's similar to other messages that were identified as spam in the past. So you don't just get one uh, spam notification like it's in the spam folder, you're gonna get a second notification that it is spam, uh, and that, that's right at the top there for you, all right? Now the se seventh item that jumps out to me is that when you look at the attachments, they're actually images. Do you see this? It says image one, image two. And the little mountain icon that you can see right above the mouse, that little uh, mountain icon at the top is, is a symbol for images, right? But what I'm, my point is that they're not files, okay? They're not files to open, they're images. So that's just another thing that jumps out. Now the eighth thing is that when you hover over items, it doesn't change the mouse like you can click it. So if you're hovering over this different font color blue than the black, it doesn't let you click it. Read the message, it doesn't let you click it. Um, all these other items, even the website, it doesn't let you click it. So the key is to never click it, but even if you wanted to, you can sort of hover over it to see if there's anything genuinely behind it. 
Now, one thing that I noticed without clicking is that if you hover over read the message, take a look at this. You're going to see an encryption here. You see in the middle, it says recipient email address, Prism Home Lending. Guys, that is a third lender from Everclear and Caliber. Now we're talking Prism. And you can see the sender's email address. See that R Hoffman at ATGF, right? ATGF.com. Never heard of them, guys. So you don't need to click it to really dig into this a little bit. Now, the ninth flag that I found is, do you see this C, the letter C here? Like, without even reading any of this, you can tell that that C is much different than the rest of, of Alber Home Loans, okay? So that C is larger, it's bold, it's a different font size, it's bigger than the H and the L. And so that definitely jumped out at me. The 10th flag is that there's extra space in the please note section. And what I'm referring to without even reading it is it looks like there's at least two, if not three spaces right here. All right, if someone's gonna take the time to put it in there and put it in every email, you're usually gonna see it be pretty good without the spaces, okay? Now the 11th flag is that the names don't match at all, okay? So we have Joyce here, uh, who uh, apparently Joyce, allegedly Joyce, but then when you scroll down, we have a Derek. We have a Derek at Caliber, and then we have a third person, Amy. Now I realize that says contact my manager, Amy, but the point is typically you don't have three people on an email, right? Maybe, maybe a second if someone else is collaborating or if they wanna use the whole manager approach, but they're not gonna have a sign off from Joyce and be a Derek in there. That's just, it's just flat out sloppy, okay? So it's obviously not adding up, but there's still many other things that point out to me. And I want you to really understand that because it's, it's obviously not normal and it's ridiculous, but you need to catch these things, okay? Now the 12th flag is that there are different font styles and sizes everywhere, okay? So this font is different from this font that's different from this font that's different than this font. That's four right there. It doesn't all have to be the same, but the point is it's different font. Look at this, different one, two, three, three different style fonts right at the bottom. So it seems like every little section is just a complete mess, <laughs> okay? Now, the 13th flag is that the spacing in the email sign off is crazy. Look at this, direct line, we have uh, all these spaces. Every little thing is space. Look, they got F, capital F, capital A, lower X. When do you see that, right? I mean, it's just completely sloppy, but look at all the spacing that they did. So they didn't space, looks like, well, yeah, they did space close their funder. Look at that, it's still spaced. It's just not as spaced. Uh, maybe it's that effect that it's bold, but that's spaced out, spaced. These are obviously not spaced, but then you also have uh, all these just extra spaces in here, which really should just jump out like big time red flag as well, okay? Uh, let's see here, the 14th flag is that it has, it has the notice section twice. So at the bottom of the email, do you see this section here for notice, it's information, it's proprietary? It actually just has it a full second time as a repeat in different font, right? How ridiculous is that? So uh, pointing that out as well, the 15th uh, flag here for me is that the extra space under the last notice. Do you see all this space right here? It, it just goes hand in hand with the ridiculous <laughs> spacing in the email. But you can see that typically you don't see anything like that. You don't see it repetitive. I mean, it just looks visually completely different from other emails, okay? So all this extra space is just another reason that this is ridiculous, okay? Number 16th flag, how about the bright orange message at the bottom that says it's phishing? Downloading these attachments are disabled. Thank God for Google, right? I use Gmail myself. This email has been identified as phishing. So it not only went to spam, because Google does a phenomenal job, but it obviously has got this orange message that says, you know, it's been phishing. They're obviously looking for information. They want you to open it, which you're not supposed to, but uh, this is why I'm really doing this for you, right? In addition to that, it tells you that it's been identified as phishing. If you want to download these, you're going to need to trust this message and click not spam in the banner above. You're not going to click on the links. You're not going to try to click on the links. You're not going to open it. But even if you do, 
you're going to hover over things to see the real details behind the, the, the dumpster fire that this email is, okay? Um, and so the 17th flag is this little photo right here. Obviously, I think all spam messages don't show the images. But the point is, I think with spam, they disable the images. But even if they showed the image, have you ever seen a full image with a Z next to it? What's a Z doing here, right? They just completely added that in there. So I've never seen it before, have you? Pro probably not. And so you really have 17 things here that add up why this is just a complete dumpster fire spam phishing email so my guidance to you is never open it if uh if you're not recognized it you don't need to if someone's if it's real important they'll call you or they'll email you multiple times things like that now um other flags that are not here guys let's talk about the value when i was um uh, training some of our signing agents i had some of them reach out and say I, I really want to do the signing. I, it's, it, it was like, I, I think it's like $575. Now, believe it or not, some of our team, yes, they do get those checks, but it's from their clients. It's from their buddies, their friends, uh, of their network of, of contacts in this business. It's not a, a, a random email out of the blue from someone you don't know that wants to give you a much higher than normal fee. Okay, so there's a difference with that. But if you get an email that's got like a suspiciously high dollar amount from someone you've never worked with, that's a flag. If it's not a file or company or, or something like that that you've ever worked on before, that's another flag. So there are some of those that exist that just simply do not show in this email. Now, they're clearly trying to play into the secure messaging, but um, it, it's just obviously it's just not adding up, right? So what would new signing agents do with this? Well, typically, some of them open it, which they really shouldn't, but they also maybe would try to reach out to Joyce. They would reach out to some of the phone. Like this one's blatantly obvious to me. It's just garbage, right? But what would experienced notary signing agents do? That's what, that's what you really want to know, right? Well, the first thing is they would, they would simply delete it, right? Because obviously the red flags are there. They have a trained mind to know what's garbage, right? And this is clearly garbage, which is why all these 17 flags exist. So they wouldn't open the message at all. They would simply delete it they would be able to tell basically right away from all the flags without having to reach out to anybody, okay? So an experienced signing agent would know not to reach out. When a new signing agent would get excited, they see a high dollar amount. They get excited that it's a date here of the same uh, day of today, right? So that excitement, that uh, too good to be true, um, they, they would really, uh, feel maybe a little bit confused of whether to chase it or not chase it kind of thing But an experienced signing agent would not have these issues because they wouldn't chase it They wouldn't reach out. They wouldn't open it and uh... all right as promised We're going to show you how Google can search and clean your computer So what you're going to do is go to a Google Chrome browser and when you're in Google Chrome that browser You're going to see your image like your Google image and what you're going to do is simply click here and go to settings. All right, so once you click settings, I want you to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're going to see this advanced option. So click the advanced option so it opens up further. And then you're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and go to clean up computer. And when you clean up computer, we're going to look for uh, we're going to have Google find harmful software and Google Chrome can find it and remove it on your computer. Okay, so you would go ahead and click find and they're going to do a search for anything on your computer. If you've ever had any issues and you'll see what comes up. I'm not going to wait for this to finalize, but um, I just wanted to let you know that's available to you when you use Google Chrome browser. Click the three dots, click settings, go to advanced at the bottom, open that up and go to clean up your computer. So there you go. And that's really what we have here for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share this video, guys. If you wanna add value to other signing agents, other notaries, if you wanna help out your friends by, by making sure they're getting high quality information, to not have any issues with spam emails or viruses on their computer because ultimately you know that's what they want you to do. They want you to click, they want you to open the attachments, they want to see how many times you've opened it, they have fancy software, as, as much of a dumpster fire as this is, they have uh, softwares and, and the capability to see how many times you've opened it, right? So if you opened this 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, they know you're a better target than the people that never opened it. Okay? So keep that in mind. There's a lot of fancy stuff behind the scenes. But if you want to take care of other signing agents and other notaries, feel free to share this video with them because you care about them, right? I want you to stay safe, stay vigilant, keep doing great signings, and as always, do things the right way, and I will see you in the next video.